Hey, Eagle fans, I'm Thomas Mott. It's officially draft season here on Philadelphia Eagles now. I think I'm going to do a seven-round mock draft the next couple of weeks. If you guys want a seven-round mock draft, go ahead and give this video a thumbs up right now. We get to 500 likes. I'll do the seven-round mock draft next week. How about that? Bosses are saying i got to get 500 likes to go to do the mock draft, so go ahead and give this video a thumbs up. All right, so as you see in the title of this video, I want to jump into the idea of trading back from number six, getting more draft picks, and still seeing who's available in the middle to late part of the first round of the 2021 NFL Draft. Now, listen, Philadelphia is in need of good young players. We all know that. They obviously have some cap space issues, meaning some of the better veterans might be let go. We can see Zach Earth being traded, Derek Barnett. I mean, there are a lot of options to go ahead and free up that cap space, which means, of course, Philadelphia could use as many draft picks as possible. And so adding some more draft picks wouldn't necessarily be the worst thing. And as I'm going to show you, there are some pretty good players that are at positions of need that Philadelphia has that you could get if you trade back from number six overall. So trading back, of course, is a real option, should be considered. I think Philadelphia will take a good, long, hard look about teams want to come up to number six, and Philadelphia goes ahead and goes back. Now, if it's me, and I'm being 100% honest, I want to stay at number six and get the best cornerback, wide receiver, or linebacker available. But again, there are some other options. And just because Devontae Smith is the rated number one best wide receiver, Patrick Sertan is the number one cornerback, doesn't mean they turn out to be the number one player. And so if Philadelphia can do their due diligence, which hasn't really been the case in the past. They haven't drafted well in the first round, but if they were to do their due diligence and find somebody they like better, going back could be you know, a win-win because you get your player plus get additional draft picks. Okay, so the first question, of course, is, what would a mock trade look like if Philadelphia wants to come back? We'll give you two examples. The first of which is going back a little bit. How about a Panther-Eagle trade going from six, just two spots back to number eight? Now, Carolina, of course, they're very interested in a quarterback. They're heavily involved in trading the number eight overall pick to the Lions or Matthew Stafford until that one, of course, fell through. And so you could see Carolina wanting to come up to take Zach Wilson or take Trey Lance or perhaps even Justin Fields if he were to fall in the draft. And so a trade would look something like this. Philadelphia gets eight overall. They get a 2021 third and a 2021 fourth. I don't think you could go ahead and get a second round draft pick out of this, just based on the fact you're only two spots back. But an additional third and additional fourth are pretty good in order to be able to just move two spots back, still get the player that you want to go ahead and draft, and then, of course, get additional picks in the third and fourth round. Now, how about going back a little bit further? What about New England at number 15? 15 is the highest New England has been at in decades. I mean, they were always in the late 20s, obviously, with Tom Brady going to Super Bowls, but this is the highest they have been in a long time, and maybe New England wants to go ahead and get a quarterback. 15, not a great spot unless you want a Mac Jones or a Kyle Trask. Well, let's say they come up to six. That's when you could go ahead and get uh, some pretty good compensation overall. Let's just say you get number 15 overall for, for Philadelphia. I think you get a second-round draft pick included in this as well, and maybe even a future fourth-round draft pick as well. And so that's how you get the second-round draft pick there by going back further from 6 to 15. Because, of course, all these draft numbers kind of change based on where you're picking. So two examples and two options if you want Philadelphia to move back, whether it's way far back to like the middle of the first round or just a couple of spots back in order to go ahead and still get your star player. What do you guys think? Pin comment down below, should the Eagles uh, trade with the number six pick? Should they stay put? Let me know what you guys think. K for keep, T for trade down. I'm curious if anyone is interested in trading back. I think I'll get a lot of people wanting to stay at number six. But of course, let me know if you are one of those people. But if you want to trade back, then let me know as well. I want to gauge your guys' thoughts on this as you, of course, are the Eagle fans. Okay, so who are some trade back candidates that Philadelphia could go ahead and pick up? Some we've talked about, some we haven't here on the channel. We did a video on the top 10 options at number six just a week ago. And the number one, or the first player on the list, because he was a lot further back, was number 10, Jalen Watt, at least on my video I did last week. He, to me, if you were to move back just a couple of spots and you still want a wide receiver, Waddle makes a ton of sense. Right now, technically the third best wide receiver on my draft board behind Devontae Smith and, of course, Jamar Chase. But he also was the best wide receiver at Alabama for a long time until Devontae Smith came into his own. I think Waddle is an elite prospect. He had a bad ankle injury in 2020. Did play a little bit in the National Championship game, but obviously not a lot. Very explosive. He has all the uh, tools you want to go ahead and pair with Carson Wentz or Jalen Hurts. And the fact that you're going to see Smith and Jamar Chase be the first two taken means later on in that draft, maybe even 15 overall, Waddle could be sitting there and you still get your wide receiver. You still get at least one from Alabama. As we said, I mean, the guy was great at Alabama, 34 career games, 17 touchdowns. This was Tua's favorite deep target before Tua left the draft just two years ago. And so you look at a guy like Jalen Waddle and you say, okay, if we're able to get additional picks, like, like imagine this, instead of taking Devontae Smith or Jamar Chase at six, you, you take Jalen Waddle at eight 
and you also get a third and fourth round draft pick as we showed with the Carolina trade, right? So you get Waddle plus two more picks. Maybe you get a wide receiver in the third round, and maybe he turns out to be someone like Chase Claypool who was a later round draft pick. Van Jefferson last year, who both turned out to be really good, even though they were first round draft picks. We know wide receiver continues to be the need. I continue to go ahead and harp on the fact that, yes, Jackson will be probably on the roster next year, although not guaranteed. No Alshon, obviously. So you have Fulgham and Rager. Ward is going to be an, uh, an exclusive rights free agent. I mean, this has got to get bolstered, and I think adding Waddle could be a very good overall. I mean, let's just say it, a very good overall draft pick, even if it was not at number six. Again, like the video if you guys want a seven-round mock draft. I think we're going to do a seven-round mock draft. I think it's going to be a lot of fun because I'm going to play around with the mock draft you know, software and see where I go, and I'll give you guys my results if you guys can get this video to 500 likes. And also, we are less than 100 subs away from 16,000 subscribers here on Philadelphia Eagles now, so make sure you guys are subscribed. We're at like 15,945. Trying to get that to keep going up, so subscribe down below. All right, another option here. Hear me out. Micah Parsons, a trade back candidate. Yes, the linebacker that all of us are saying is the best linebacker in the draft. I think as I look at the first round, and more specifically the top 10, I think there's a very real possibility Micah Parsons is the one that falls. Like there's always that one prospect who is clearly a top five, top 10 pick who just falls for a multitude of reasons, whether he got injured, which Parsons didn't, but he did sit out 2020, whether they're just quarterbacks being taken above him or other reasons. I think Parsons could fall back, which would result in Philadelphia getting the linebacker of their dreams, which they never really do in the first round of the draft, and just getting him later while also picking up additional picks. Let's just do this. Here's my projected top eight and a scenario where Parsons could go ahead and fall. If you look at these teams, not a lot of them need linebacker. We know the Jags are going to go with Trevor Lawrence. Jets, you can go quarterback here. You can go, uh, obviously, wide receiver. But what about offensive tackle and go with a Sewell, the offensive tackle out of Oregon? Dolphins take Devontae Smith. That would be another reason for the Eagles to trade back because they probably want Devontae Smith. Falcons go quarterback with Justin Fields. Bengals take Rayshon Slater, the offensive lineman. I think the Bengals are for sure going to go offensive line. Let's say the Panthers trade up with Philadelphia, the trade we talked about earlier. They take uh, Zach Wilson because they want a quarterback. Detroit needs a corner. They take Patrick Sertan, leading Philadelphia there at number eight. And boom, Micah Parsons there at number eight. And I think you can see a scenario where Micah Parsons comes back even more, maybe to 10, 11, or 12. Maybe you trade with, I don't know, the 49ers at number 12 and get your linebacker. So Parsons, a guy who is the best linebacker in the draft, would be the best linebacker on the Eagles by far, and the best one they've taken in a draft since Jordan Hicks way back in, I don't know, 2015, 2016, whatever the Texas linebacker was taken. Philly could really bolster that linebacking core and make their defense just all the more better and do so by coming back in the draft a little bit. So I think Parsons is a projected to be a top five pick. I think a lot of people say he's top five talent in this draft, but I think he falls based on the fact that there are going to be three, maybe even four quarterbacks taken inside the top 10, a couple of wide receivers, and boom, the Eagles are sitting there. If they trade back, take a linebacker, I mean, great overall, and you get additional picks later on to spend on wide receiver and whatever else you want. Let's just say, I mean, they could go linebacker first round, wide receiver second round, wide receiver fourth round, get two receivers, and still get the elite linebacker that we also desperately want. Okay, we'll go to more players here in a second. Again, make sure you guys check out the betting with our friends at BetUS. The Super Bowl is just a couple days away. You want to jump in on some betting prospects, do it with our friends at BetUS, chatsports.com. 4 slash Eagles bet. Promo code Eagles125 is the betting odds. Continue to pour in. Chiefs are kind of holding the line right now. Minus three and a half. You bet on Brady, you're going to win some money. Over-unders is 56 and a half. And again, I keep saying that betting on Brady is something that I'm probably going to go ahead and do. I got my bet US account all ready to go, and I've been betting on games for the past couple of months. But I'm going to bet on Brady in this one, meaning give me the Tampa, Tampa Bay plus three and a half. You can also bet on the Super Bowl prop bets, which to me are like the most fun thing to do. And it's crazy how many different little aspects of the game you can bet on to make the overall Sunday uh, experience more fun, right? You win some money while watching the game. If Brady has more than half a yard rushing on his first carry, it's plus 110. I mean, you, you can be win money right there just based on one quarterback sneak from Tom Brady. What about Patrick? Mahomes' first touchdown distance it will be over 13 and a half yards. Under, you can bet on that. It's passing touchdown. And then, of course, Tyree Kill. What if he doesn't score a touchdown? Plus 120, the bet to go ahead and do that. Plenty of other prop bets. Jump in on this deal right now. If you have any questions in terms of betting, just questions in general, email us, eagles at chatsports.com. But you sign up, chatsports.com forward slash eagles bet. Use that promo code eagles125. Okay, now, I keep saying I like Patrick Sertan. I keep saying I like cornerback for Philadelphia if they don't go wide receiver or linebacker. Now, Sertan is going to go inside the top 10, 100%. And if Philadelphia doesn't feel comfortable taking him at number 6, back you go. Let's say you do the New England trade, back to 15. There are at least four corners that could go in the first round. And J.C. Horn, the cornerback who is, of course, the son of former wide receiver Joe Horn of the Saints, makes a lot of sense. But he's not going to be the... Um, 
Let's just say this. He's not going to be as highly sought after as Caleb Farley or Patrick Sertan. And so you get a lot of value while also being able to go ahead and trade back. And as we have said many times, the Eagles cornerback depth chart is bleak, right? Is it going to be Avante Maddox opposite of Darius Slay? You get Nickel Ro Roby Coleman, Craven LeBlanc, both unrestricted free agents. I think they're both gone. Philadelphia got to get, I mean, they, they got to get a corner at some point in this draft. And whether you want to do that in the second or third round or get one of the guys that are projected to be first round draft picks, you could go back to 15, take JC Horn, and pick up an additional second round draft pick, giving you two second round draft picks, and then a fourth in the future. Not bad value. Again, trying to give you guys examples of value that Philadelphia could do if they were to go ahead and move back and show that there are great players if the Eagles were to go ahead and make a trade down. Okay, Parsons or Horn, who'd you rather have? I'd rather have Micah Parsons, honestly. I'd be typing MP down below in the comment section. But if you like JC Horn, let me know down below. Maybe you like cornerback a little bit more, more of a need in Philadelphia. We'll hear from you guys. Okay, final player here on the list. And this goes back to if you wanted to go, because I, I didn't give you an example of trading back into the 20s, but if you wanted to go back into the 20s and get like a lot more, because going from 20 up to 6 would give the Eagles a ton of extra draft capital, you still get your wide receiver, Rashad Bateman. Wide receiver out of Minnesota. I think he's going to go ahead and be the fourth receiver taken off of the board. I think it'll be Smith, Chase, obviously Waddle there at the third, and then Rashad Bateman there as the fourth overall wide receiver. He's the fourth best on my big board. And everything I keep reading is that he's a he's a surefire star with Pro Bowl potential. Just because he played at Minnesota doesn't mean he's not a great player. A ton of great catches. I mean, this guy catches every ball thrown at him. Good size, six foot one, about two ten. I mean, everything you want in a wide receiver, and you could get him back later on in the draft. I would like to have Devontae Smith. I keep saying that. But let's just say Smith is either gone by number six or someone wants to come to number six and you can move back. There are still options, and Bateman is an option here, especially later on in the first round, maybe even early in the second round if other teams aren't going for wide receiver, but I think they will. So the whole idea of this video is that there are plenty of options in this NFL draft. I talked a lot about how there are 10 really, really good players who, to me, feel like surefire pro bowlers, and that can be true and can be accurate. But every single year in the draft, we see teams go back and take up players and get additional picks, and it works really, really well for them. They draft very, very well. Justin Jefferson is going to be the best receiver out of the 2020 draft. He went 22nd overall, one behind Philadelphia taking Jalen Rager, as you guys know. So trading back is definitely an option. Would I do it for sure? Mm, not exactly. I mean, I think I'd rather stay at six and take Sertan or obviously uh, a guy like Devontae Smith. But let's say either two of those guys are gone or you get a massive offer, then trading back is not the end of the world. I want you guys to be prepared and knowledgeable on that, which is why, of course, we're doing this video here today. There you go. Trade back targets, who they could go for, Waddle, Parsons, Bateman, maybe get an offensive lineman mixed in there, J.C. Horn, Caleb Farr, plenty of options. I think that was a good educational video to get you guys up to date as the draft is approaching very quickly as we're two months away from the 2021 NFL draft. Ultimately, I'm for today here on Philadelphia Eagles Now. I'm your host, Thomas Mont, signing off. Enjoy the rest of your day.